Hi, I'm Teresa Mendoza and I'm a technical service scientist at Biolegend. Proper instrument controls are really important to make sure that your results are not only accurate, but they're reproducible as well. Therefore, in today's video, I'll be talking about which instrument controls you could use to set up your flow cytometer. So whenever I'm setting up my flow cytometer, there's two main things that I really focus on. One, it's setting up the PMT voltages, and second, I check whether I have to use compensation to correct for any fluorescent spillover in my experiment. And so I want to emphasize now that order here really matters, and a key concept to really remember is that compensation is voltage dependent. So this means that if you realize halfway through your experiment, you have to go back and adjust your voltages, for example, you also have to go back and recalculate your compensation. So this is the reason why it's really important to use the appropriate instrument controls. So let's talk about the first point a little bit more, which is setting up the voltages. So this is something that's kind of confusing for new flow users because there's been different ways to do it in the past. And so these days, a lot of companies or instrument vendors, they provide CST, which are cytometer setup and tracking beads, to use for your instrument QC, and this makes sure that there's not a lot of day-to-day -day fluctuations, but it also calculates an optimal PMT voltage during your QC. And so something that I kind of get asked a lot is, why can't I just use the default CSNT voltages that were output during the QC? And the answer is, well, it's not really a one-size-fits-all, and that the optimal voltages were calculated on the beads and not your specific samples. So because they were optimal for the beads, they might not always be optimal for your particular samples. So for the tip that I actually have for setting up your PMT voltages is to use the CSNT optimal voltages as your starting point and then run your single color controls. Once you've seen what your single color controls look like, adjust accordingly so that your negative and positive populations are clearly separated and that everything's within the scale of your flow. So this really leads us into the last topic of today's video, which are single color controls. As the name suggests, single color controls or samples stain the single fluorophore. So for example, if you're running a seven color float panel, you should create seven single color controls. And so most users typically use either cells or compensation beads to prepare their single color controls. And so if you're wondering when should you use one or the other, I'll kind of break it down. So cells are really beneficial if you have plenty to use and you have a distinct bimodal expression. So meaning, think of something like CD4. You have a clear negative and positive population. So that's something you would use cells for. So now let's think about three different scenarios. So let's say you don't have enough cells or that your marker's expression is naturally low in your samples, or the third option is that it's not clearly defined between your negative and positive populations. So if this is your situation for your marker, try considering compensation beads instead. And so for compensation beads, something to really keep in mind is that sometimes they're not universally compatible with all antibodies. So for this purpose, one recommendation I have for you is to go through the vendor's technical data sheet and make sure that the compensation beads you're going to purchase is compatible with the antibodies in your antibody flow panel. So Biologen offers compensation beads in our catalog. We've already tested it and shown that it's compatible with most human, mouse, and rat immunoglobulin isotypes. It's also compatible with most kappa and lambda chains. In addition, we've also tested and shown that it binds to rabbit, hamster, and donkey immunoglobulins as well. And if you're thinking about doing intracellular experiments, we've shown that it's compatible with specialized fluorophore specific buffers, such as our true nuclear buffers. So in today's video, we talked about instrument controls. If you have any additional questions, feel free to reach out to tech at biologic.com.